The following is a program of the Santa Barbara County Education Office. To learn more, visit sbceo.org. Hi, I'm Susan Salcido, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools, and I am so delighted to introduce my guest today, Jani Lindbergh, third year resource specialist and world cultures teacher at San Inez Valley High School in San Inez. Jani, thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure to be here. It's so <laughs> exciting, and I can't wait to have you share about your teaching experience and all that you uh, do day in and day out with our students each day. Um, and we can talk about your Distinguished New Educator Award that you <laughs> yes. were recognized with earlier this uh, year, one of only three teachers to be recognized in the county. So congratulations for Thank that. You. Thank Can't you. wait to get into it. But before we do yeah. that, let's roll back. Let's talk about your childhood and upbringing and where you actually were raised, very key to who you are today and where you teach. So share with us. Definitely. Um, I had the privilege of growing up and solving. Um, brother, sister, cousins, aunts, uncles. I had all my grandparents locally. Um, so great community. It's really small, so a lot of people know everybody. And that just builds a lot of trust and a lot of um, support other than just your family. Mm -hmm. um, definitely grew up with very active parents that were very involved. And it was very important that they knew that time, or I knew that time was everything. Um, it was bigger and more important than just stuff. And my parents not only coached me in sports, um, took me to brownies, took me to school, they knew my education, they knew my teachers, um, they, they were very involved and I think that's a huge part of my foundation mm -hmm. and what I believe and um, family is a, a, everything to me. So you grew up in Solvang, spent a lot of time as a close-knit family. Tell us where you went to elementary school, junior high school, and high school. Sure. Um, so all of my elementary and junior high was at Solving Elementary, mm -hmm. um, Solving Warriors, and went to Santa's High School, and it's also where my parents graduated, class of 77. Um, I was just mentioning to you, my parents met on grad night, and they're about to celebrate their 40th anniversary this summer, so... Um, Happy yeah, anniversary homegrown. to them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So it's 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 been really great um, going through and going back to the school that my parents went to, and also my brother and my sister as well. Very exciting. Pirates all around yes. and warriors, right? <laughs> <laughs> Is that yes. solving? Yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, again, happy anniversary to your parents. Thank and you. I know a lot of um, where you grew up. You said homegrown really is at your core and mm -hmm. and fills in a lot of the color for for the between the lines in terms mm -hmm. of um, you teaching at San Ynez High School now. How's it feel to teach at the school you attended, even I'm sure with teachers that maybe you had as as a student? Absolutely. I know I knew going into the position a lot of my teachers and I knew the layout of the campus mm -hmm. and I knew um, the the gym and the office and the administration and and just that comfort as a new teacher really allowed me to be comfortable, um, but it definitely is weird driving on the campus every single day. <laughs> Again, um, yes. <laughs> and not only um, was it weird for me to be called Miss Lindbergh, you know, that was a, an adjustment to me because that's my mother's name. Mm -hmm. um, and it's it's really fun to c connect with my old alumni and old um, friends that I used to go to school with, and now it's I'm teaching there, so it's been really fun to share with them that. I'm not only their alumni, I'm now a teacher at that high school. That's fantastic. So I'm going to go backwards a little bit. We talked mm -hmm. about elementary, junior, and high school. Let's talk about college. What college did you attend? What was your major? Yeah, I was a liberal studies major at Chico State up in Northern California as a Wildcat. And I was um, intended to be a teacher right away, but then I, once I graduated, I, I wanted some more world experiences, um, traveling and living in a big city. So that led me to San Francisco and, and to bigger things, um, being a small town girl. But I love Chico. It was an opportunity for me to kind of spread my wings mm -hmm. and remove myself from my family. and and see what I was made of. So really great experience in Chico. Mm -hmm. It sounds like you really knew you wanted to be a teacher, but not yet, not yes. right away after graduating. So um, I think this is a really 
interesting part of your career path mm -hmm. that you took a pause knowing where you wanted to end up. But tell us about that pause and where, what you did and some of those experiences before going back to getting your teaching credential. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's something I really focus on with my students now. I, I remind them that it wasn't, college isn't for everybody right away. Um, you're not expected to know what you're gonna do with the rest of your life right after high school. Uh, it's just not realistic. And so I knew that I needed to stand on my own two feet. And so I wanted to live in the big city, like I said, being a small town girl, it was nice for me to just expose myself to more diverse and, and new people, new community. And um, I wanted to travel. And I think travel is, is really enriching and expanded my uh, perception of the world. So I became a nanny and an au pair in Sweden because that's where my family came from, or both my sides of my family. Mm -hmm. So I fortunately became an au pair for one year over in uh, Kumla, Sweden. And my family over there is my family, um, the family that I nannied for. I had two little boys. Um, and then I went on to Australia because who doesn't want to live in Australia? I don't know. <laughs> Everyone wants <laughs> right. to live there, and right? I was on the beach and two little girls, and so that was only eight months. And so uh -huh. I just feel like that exposure and meeting new people and, and building that confidence uh, really allowed me to. Um, be more comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. And so it allowed me to come back here and really prioritize what's important. And I worked a few different jobs and I tried a few different things, which I believe, you know, it's, it's okay to fail at those things. Not that I failed, but it was an opportunity for me to see what was really important to me and what I really wanted to do. And so while you were, when you say you were back here, were you back here in San Ynez Valley at yes. that time? So I moved home from Australia in 2011 and from then on, I, for a few years, I, I kind of bounced back and forth between working in a tasting room, mm -hmm. um, property management, even a doctor's office. And I just didn't want the job anymore. I wanted a career. Mm -hmm. I wanted a purpose and a passion and something to wake up for each day and feel proud of. And um, after many conversations, but for some reason, one conversation with my sister, it really hit home. She's like, just be a teacher. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's your passion. And then within a week, I quit my job and signed up for Antioch University. and. Never look back. That's fantastic. Sounds like the light bulb went back yes. on because yes. it had been on while you were in college. But those experiences that you mm -hmm. had were incredible. Yes. They really are educational too, aren't they? Mm -hmm. Those world experiences yes, for absolutely. sure. I love this because um, many, many uh, professionals will go from high school to college to right to their career. Mm -hmm. And for you, you you had a different path and, and look where you are now, yeah. you know, to a really great profession. Exactly. Yeah, and, and doing- Well, it was, it was frustrating, you mm -hmm. know, going through those trials and errors but um, I have no regrets and I'm glad that obviously things have worked out well so and they I'm really have fortunate for those those opportunities and that time to really build my character yeah that's great what I'm capable of that's great thanks for sharing that that pathway for us so let's talk about your teaching day and I, I mean day and just in a, as one day of, of the of the year mm -hmm. in terms of your teaching schedule um, when we say resource specialist when we say teacher of world cultures I'd really like for the viewers to understand who it is you're teaching how it, how you go about your day if you wouldn't mm -hmm. mind uh, giving it a general description sure mm -hmm. so I have four sections of tutorial um, it's a glorified study hall mm -hmm. where students can come and get their specialized academic instruction. Um, they are able to get their work done from other classes, get organized to help them set up their binders. Uh, we check their homework assignments, what they're missing, any upcoming tests. It's just kind of an extended um, resource for them to continue being organized at school. Mm -hmm. So uh, we also really focus on transition, which is uh, helping preparing them for life after high school whether it's college or career, um, trade school, or just living at home and working part-time and, and doing like I did and kind of figuring it out. Mm -hmm. um, and then I also co-teach World Cultures with um, a prior teacher that I used to have in high school. And um, it's really great because I'm able to support, um, technically I have about 10 special ed um, IEP students in that classroom. However, I'm supporting the whole class, so I'm allowed to contribute by uh, front-loading information, visuals, um, printouts, helping with notes, study skills, and just um, really supporting that gen ed aspect, but bringing in a lot more resource um, from the special ed point of view. 
Really appreciate that description. Mm -hmm. It really uh, fills in for us your day. And a lot of what you're doing is supporting students, especially in those four um, tutorials or study mm -hmm. halls, but really supporting the students in their whole day of school, mm -hmm. um, but focused on their futures, organizing their skills. So how, how do you approach, um, you know, what are some of the things that you're, you're wanting to really ensure that they get out of your time with them to, you know, each day? in terms of really focusing on their futures? Yeah, so I think looking into their future, it comes down to every single day. And I feel that it's extremely important and intentional as a teacher to make them feel important every day. I, I know that might sound a little um, cheesy, but mm -hmm. I think it's important for them to be, to feel and walk in my classroom and feel comfortable and have a good positive environment and know that they're supported. Um, because that does go a long way, I remember almost every one of my teachers growing up, probably all of them. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that's a really important aspect that I do try to bring to them every morning, every day. So building relationships. Relationships, and, mm -hmm. because I show up every day and I'm, I care and I know what sport they're playing and I know um, how their aunt might be doing or, or something personal to them. Um, not only is it what tests they're coming up with, um, right. I, I make it very genuine so that they know that I care. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're providing academic support, but you're really understanding each of the students and building relationships mm -hmm. and knowing, helping, helping make sure that they know you really care. Right. It's beyond just the classroom. It's about their lives. Because I want them to be them, their best selves. And yes. so by having that support, um, I know how important that is by having an adult believe in you. Um, with my parents and my teachers, you know, that goes a long way. So not only can I help support them in their academics, I want them to have that confidence um, to graduate <laughs> and mm -hmm. move on from high school because it only gets better. Absolutely. I'd love, I'd love to know if you have a tip for any of us in terms of staying more organized and focused <laughs> on goals. How do you do it with your students and what can I get out of this today too? Um, I think just organization is just really taking the time and one of the biggest things that my director told me about three months into the job the best way to gain respect is um, by doing your job showing up working hard and being genuine and just having that boldness every day mm -hmm. um, but that organization of just it, it does take time <laughs> especially being a new teacher I mean I, my first year I, I spent a long time in my classroom even over the summer and just having that routine for my students to walk in. Like I said, I think it's really important that they know not only does my board look nice, I have my IEP information all coordinated and organized. Um, I have a substitute there now, so I want her to be able to just step in and know exactly what to do. Yeah, it's showing, it sounds like it's showing your students that in your modeling, being mm -hmm. prepared, being organized, taking the time, really thinking things through, being mm -hmm. really respectful of their time and thoughtful as well. Right. Thank you for those tips. That's very good. So let's talk about parent engagement and parent involvement. It's very, very important for any student at any grade level. But I know that's something that you focus on, too, in terms of engaging parents of your students. Tell us how that happens. Absolutely. Um, if I don't already know parents of my students, I definitely reach out to them right away in the beginning of the school year, whether that be a phone call, always an email. My door is always open. Um, I make it very available and accessible for them because it is their child and it's their everything where they should be involved with their education. And so by responding to them quickly and to just being confident with that phone call and that FaceTime, um, communication is everything. And I definitely reach out to them and I think it's really important to, especially in my meetings with them, make them feel they're being heard. Mm -hmm. And so they have a voice. And my kind of tip to myself personally is not only do I say a prayer going into those meetings, um, I think about like, will my dad understand what I'm saying right now? Like mm -hmm. if someone, if my dad was in that seat right there, would he understand the goal that I'm writing for the student? Or am I being clear enough? Am I being real? Because there's, there's, if I were that parent, I would want the case manager or teacher to be genuine. And so my perspective is how would I want to be treated? That's really great. That <laughs> yeah. is a really great perspective and a practical approach too, and very respectful, I think, mm -hmm. of the parents. And I think in, in education, oftentimes in special education, there are abbreviations, lingos, mm -hmm. uh, different sort of acronyms that can be easily thrown out amongst professionals right. in that field. Mm -hmm. But when you come with parents, they're really there to listen <laughs> about what can I do for my student or what's, right. how, how is he or she doing? And they want to have it something like, as you said, your mom or dad could right. definitely understand 
because it's not my dad's world. Right. But I, if it was, if he was able to understand what I'm saying or writing, then that's kind of he's my um, my focus point when I'm in those meetings, so that I know that I'm being clear mm -hmm. and being genuine with them. I, I love that your mom and dad filter into so many different <laughs> aspects of they your do. life. It's so great. So I want to talk about your Distinguished New Educator Award. Oh, yes. But before we go in there, let me just say one more thing about your, your work at San Inez Hyatt mm -hmm. right now. My understanding is that you're, you're coaching as well. So yes. outside of the classroom, say, say a little bit about what you're coaching and what does it mean for you and what does it bring to you mm -hmm. and the students? Absolutely. It's more connection mm -hmm. and relationships with my students. Um, I also played girls basketball when I was at San Inez High School. So it's been a passion of mine. My sister played all four years. I'm still very close with my old coach. And so I, this is my second year. I just finished up with my uh, girls JV basketball. And my colleague, um, she's a math teacher. She and I really work well together. And it just really creates that connection outside of the classroom. And so it's more exposure to more students, um, students that I might not see or know. So it's a way for me to connect across the whole high school and just having that um, just more connection to, to being outside of the classroom and having that relationship with my students. How fun. Coach mm -hmm. Lindbergh. Love yes. it. I <laughs> love it. All right. So Distinguished New Educator of the Year, only <laughs> one of only three awards given, and, and you were selected for that uh, acknowledgement mm -hmm. and recognition. How did it feel to hear that? It was amazing. <laughs> I mean, I can't even express into words what it really meant to me. I mean... I, again, I go back to my childhood. It's an, it's involves everything. It involves my whole foundation of my family, my faith, um, community, my colleagues who I work with now, and um, every um, teacher I've had along the way. And so it was when I got that email, my, my colleague, Stephanie Gagonis, who nominated me, texted me even before I read the email. Aww. And she's like, did you see your email? And um, yeah, I definitely broke into tears and I praise God and I... Um, it was just amazing, and it's just a reflection of everything I've worked so hard for, and it's it's um, it's still here we are today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's still very present in my everyday life, and I have it posted on my wall, and students knew that all about the award, and it was just really cool to share that with them and share that with my team, and I, I really do think it's a reflection of my department, mm -hmm. and um, it's been a, a, an amazing uh, ride this year. That's it just it's more fuel to the fire. That's great. Keeps me going. Keeps you going and, yeah. and I hope hopefully for a very very long time. I'm sure you'll have Absolutely. plenty of recognitions <laughs> in between too. When you when you received that recognition from Stephanie, I think mm -hmm, you said, mm -hmm. and uh, we went we had the awards uh, event which was really spectacular. Really loved seeing the spotlight on mm -hmm. you and others in the county. Did you learn something about what other people thought about your professionalism? in receiving that award. Did you hear something that you didn't know before, you know, or have didn't expect to hear? Maybe something I didn't know, but it was just amazing to be recognized. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, I I do feel proud of myself in itself, but yeah. um, to hear those things from complete strangers. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that one of the best parts in the night was af right after my speech, you know, which I'm so nervous for the, the speech, but walking off the stage, the walk back to my seat, I had so many people, mm -hmm. just people I didn't know, That's great. and just say, your speech was beautiful, good job, congratulations, and um, I even had someone stop me at Public Market here in Santa Barbara and just say, oh, you won that award. Oh, that's um, great. So it's just really nice to know that people do recognize and do support each other because we do need to build each other up. Wonderful. I, it was a very spectacular yes. night for a very special reason, for sure. And so we talked earlier a little bit about a, a book that you read. I'm going to mm -hmm. switch over to a book that, that you read that really inspired you at some point. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure if it was while you were teaching or before you were teaching, but share <clears throat> with the viewers today the book and what it did for you. Sure. Um, it's called Start. It was a book that my sister actually gave me. It was probably about four years ago, maybe five years ago. Okay. Um, it's a book about start, even though it doesn't matter what age you are or where you are personally or professionally, start being awesome. <laughs> mm -hmm. There's no time to be average. There's no time just to get by each day and just make it happen and pay the bills and just be um, routine. Uh, it's so clear now that that book really changed my life. I feel like it, and I apologize, I don't know the author because I'm... That's okay. Um, I'm sure everyone's yeah. Googling it right now. They're, I know, they're right? looking it up. It's called Start. Start. It has a red cover. <laughs> um, but it really was a focus on looking into 
what are you going to be or do to make your life joyful? And I really do show up to my job um, with joy. And well, yes, I have hard days and the, the job is really hard. Um, I definitely, like I said, I've never looked back. And this book really um, changed that trajectory for me and to stop wasting time because time is of essence and I feel like I need to live with urgency and um, why I mess around with things that aren't making me happy and having a purpose. So this book really made me um, stop everything and, and change my life. And my sister even called me. She's like, are you okay? <laughs> Should I have not given you that book? I'm kind of concerned, but I'm like, no, this is a good thing. I feel like this is a sign for me to, this is time. So That's that great. was a great book to start. Yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much for sharing that. And it sounds like if it were four, if it was four or five years ago, it was right at the time <laughs> where you were thinking, you know what, I think I'm going to give Antioch a yeah. look here and, yeah. and get your teaching credential and begin. Right. Um, ending some parts of your life and starting mm -hmm. up something new. Also, you said something about joy, uh, showing up with joy. Mm -hmm. I would say not only do you show up to your classroom with joy, you show up here with joy. Every Absolutely. time I've ever um, had an opportunity to talk with you, <laughs> it really comes through. So while it may have been part of the book, I really think mm -hmm. um, truly that's who you are and what you bring to your profession and every Thank day. You. Yes, it really, compliment. really comes through. Yeah, well, I, I definitely credit, like I said, my parents and my family and um, my faith is very strong. So I think that's, I know that's a huge part. That's great. Of that's it. wonderful. Thank yeah. you for sharing that. So you're in your third year of teaching. You're mm -hmm. almost going to be in your fourth year right. of teaching. Yes. And I am sure that there's just been some special highlights, even with three years, maybe a particular student or a family or a particular particular circumstance that really um, rings to you as a highlight so far. Is there mm -hmm. anything that comes to mind that you would mind sharing? Sure. Um, I have a lot of great connections with a lot of my students. Um, this last year, one of my students that I've worked with since the beginning, he was nominated um, Homecoming King. Oh. And so I was his teacher escort and he made the news and it was a really big deal. And he's, he's kind of the king on campus even still and so just I've learned a lot from that family and um, his name's Alec and Alec, you Alec say? Uh -huh. yeah um, he's actually in the video that was shared yes. at the awards yes and I have multiple students I have many students that just really make me feel they, they bring me things they bring me like I look forward to going to my desk today um, just really that connection with families mm -hmm. I think that's a, the biggest thing that's been um, a pleasure to to work with these students. Um, but definitely coaching basketball and just the connections I've made um, have been, they're all highlights. I don't know. I just, as you're speaking and I'm thinking about your school and how well you know it, I can just imagine Coach Lindbergh, <laughs> Mrs. Lindbergh, walking through the hallways and having so many students mm -hmm. probably calling out your name just to say hello mm -hmm. and getting that connection with you each day. Um, it's very, very special. Um, and when you said you were a teacher escort for mm -hmm. Alec at the homecoming uh, king. Mm -hmm. um, is that at the football game? It was actually at the homecoming assembly. Oh, so at the assembly. School. So he walks or he gets introduced. He walked into the onto the gym floor in front of the whole school, and they played a fun song and and talked about uh, his about him and his favorite classes and why he chose myself. And there was another colleague as well. So that, where there was two of us actually escorting him. That's great. So. If our viewers have any chance to watch the video that, that he was part of, mm -hmm. it's really, really outstanding. And Thank you. Yes, yeah. it really makes that connection clear. And it was were his parents there mm -hmm. too? That's, Absolutely. That's great. Yeah. That's great. So Jenny, tell us what um, what is the best part of being a teacher? I feel joy every day. Mm -hmm. I go into school thinking I'm the, I'm the luckiest girl in the world. Um, I found my purpose, and that's what life is, right? So I really do enjoy, enjoy saying that I'm a teacher. When people ask, well, what do you do? Like, I, I feel like I'm bragging. <laughs> like I get to say that I'm a teacher. It's a, it's a real job, and it's really making a difference, and I, I'm really proud of the job. So I think it is very hard, but I definitely feel that the best job, part of the job is, is those connections and knowing that impact that I'm making, um, not just in a job, but I hope you know, someday that kid comes back to me and says, because of you, mm -hmm. you know. That's great. And you're right, it, is, it can be so challenging. It is challenging. Mm -hmm. It is part of the profession of teaching that it is challenging. So it's important for you to find some balance, mm -hmm. to find an opportunity to relax and unwind 
how do you find that time? Sure. Mm -hmm. um, we were just talking about spring break. I know that was recently. Yeah. A lot of it is is downtime just here locally. I feel like a lot of people come here from all over the world. And so we're so lucky to live on the Central Coast. And time at the beach, um, I'm an auntie too, so I have four little nieces and a nephew, so time with them is always precious. Um, my parents also have a lake house up in Paso Robles, so a lot of my time is sent, spent on the Central Coast. Um, exercising, hanging out with friends, just really taking advantage of um, being outside and just enjoying um, that connection and, and allowing myself to relax. Good. And sleep is always a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful <laughs> thing. I would yes, definitely it makes a agree difference. with everything. <laughs> I, I would totally agree with that. So for uh, you're, you're a relatively newer teacher, mm -hmm. and there are people who are watching who are considering the teaching <laughs> profession. I think it would be wonderful for them to hear advice from you in terms of entering into the profession. What would you tell a viewer who is considering entering into the teaching pro profession today? I highly recommend it, <laughs> needless to say. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's really important to know that it is very hard. It is competitive, and you are expected to work, and, and these students and, and families deserve a good, a good teacher. So always learning. That's one of my mom's biggest things um, for all three of us is never stop learning. Mm -hmm. And so if we are, as an educator, always learning, uh, always trying to make things better and do what's right, um, it makes it more fun too. And so I think that it is a great profession and, and even my sister saying, you have summers off and you get off at three o'clock. No, it's not really true, uh -huh. <laughs> but um, it's so rewarding. And like I said, it is a lot of work, but it, it's, I, I know it's the most powerful thing I could be doing. That's wonderful. I think mm -hmm. that's very inspirational. And I think uh, anyone who's watching today and has heard your messages will probably get on the phone <laughs> and call, you know, look yeah. up a, a school right now to, to become a teacher. I think that's wonderful. Yeah. Such a great ambassador. Thank you. Yeah. Part of me is like, I wish I would have done this sooner. But then again, I don't mm -hmm. um, discount anything that I've done prior to this. That's right. That's right. As we wind down here in our interview, we have just a final few questions mm -hmm. for you. So I'd like to give you an opportunity to address uh, students who are watching. I want to give you an opportunity to say, what's a message to, to your students who are watching today? I just want to make sure my students really know that they're valued. And I, I really am genuine and I believe that they are amazing. Even if they're failing classes, um, there's, there's always tomorrow. There's always a new opportunity or it's a new day. And so I think that being that genuine with people, building that connection with them. Um, I really want them just to know that I, I support them in every way, whichever avenue that they go into. And what's amazing is students are now coming to me and, and that might not be in my class and they're letting me know, hey, I got into college. Um, so that's really important to me. You know, I've, I remember my first student who came this year and she just told me I got into college and I'm, I didn't even see her. So she came out of her way wow. to come see me. and. Um, it's really important to me. I mean, I, I, they're learning from me, but I'm also learning so much from them. And so my students are, are my world, and so that's why I love going to work every day. Well, thank you so much, Jannie. First of all, today is your birthday. Happy it is. birthday. Thank, thank, you. thank you for spending it with us and sharing it with the viewers today and, and also your story. You know, mm -hmm. really the fact that you um, took a different path to come into teaching. And now that you are teaching, you really do it with joy and love and connections yes. and really value those relationships with students. Uh, not only students, but their families, as well as the colleagues that you have mm -hmm. on campus it, and your own family. Yes. It, it really comes through, <laughs> through you. and through. So congratulations again on your Distinguished New Educator Award. And thank you so much for all the contributions you make in the classroom every day. Of course. It's my pleasure. And I'm happy to be part of it. Thank you. I'm Susan Salcedo, Santa Barbara County Superintendent of Schools. Thank you so much for joining us today for this edition of Talking with Teachers.